Getting our lips to buzz is the most basic way that we can make a sound and a good sound on the instrument. And it's important to practice buzzing. I actually practice buzzing about 10 or 15 minutes every day as a way to sort of get all of my day-to-day -day, um, wear and tear off of my chops. If I've had a very difficult day in the orchestra, I'll make sure to buzz a little bit extra in the morning and I'll find myself fresher for the rest of the day. But how do we buzz? Well, what you need to do to buzz is, well, is to start with just the mouthpiece. And the best way to hold the mouthpiece is with two fingers above and your thumb under. And it's best to use your left hand if you're right-handed or your right hand if you're left-handed because you'll tend to use less pressure that way. When buzzing, it's really a great time to check out and make sure that you're using um, your embouchure in a very efficient way as well. The mouthpiece should be positioned on the embouchure in a way that's in the best of poss all possible worlds, about 50% on top and 50% on the lower lip. As you can see, mine is about that way. Another thing to consider is making sure that the ring of the mouthpiece is out of the red portion of your lips. Now I'd like to say that this is, as I said before, in the best of all possible worlds. You might have a different physiology. You might have very big lips, um, in which case you may have to have the mouthpiece a little bit in the red. Or you may have your teeth or jaw um, naturally in a different position that requires slightly different than a 50-50 top to lower lip percentage. As long as things work, I don't really worry about it. But if it's, it is better if it's 50-50 and out of the red. Another thing to consider about the embouchure and buzzing is what your jaw position is like and are you making a proper plane, a proper um, way for the mouthpiece to sit that, that is um, a good angle. And what I like to think of is, if, you, if the instrument is to come out about like this, then you're probably in the proper plane. If the jaw juts too far, you'll be, putting, you'll be playing what's called upstream. And that puts a lot of pressure on the upper lip. And of course, if you do the opposite and tuck your jaw, then it's hard to move the air straight through the instrument. So just a natural jaw position. And a, and a nice flat plane of between the lips can allow you to buzz very clearly. Now at the same time we've been talking about this 50-50 and about the plane of the embouchure, there are some people who do play upstream and play very well. And if you're one of those people, I'm not advocating that you change what you do. But this is just sort of a baseline for most players and hopefully you'll fit into, into this. Once you know that you have the mouthpiece placed appropriately, we want to work on getting a purity of the buzz. And you want to make sure that the buzz occurs in a way that doesn't have a lot of, of unnecessary sort of crud in the sound. That is a buzz with a good sense of purity. Now, to be honest with you, some mornings, if I've had a very difficult concert, my buzz is not nearly that pure. And you'll hear some breaks. You hear how that, that doesn't want to focus really well? If I'm having a morning like that and I'm buzzing on the mouthpiece, I know that I have to put in a little extra time. But what gives us that purity? Well, one is, the mouthpiece is in the right place and the embouchure is buzzing equally across where the lips meet. The second thing is to make sure that the air is working really well across the embouchure so that you're not changing the, the blow. You're not playing with faster and slower air as you move. 
So there's a certain evenness that allows the, the chops to just simply buzz. Ways to practice working on purity of buzz are to start with one note. And a mezzo forte. And not to use any articulation, so I'm letting the air lead the buzz. Here it is again. So you hear that the buzz is immediate, and I'm not having to work hard to make things happen. Now, if you haven't done much buzzing, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you at first to, to get a clear buzz. But it's worth putting in the effort, because once you put the horn up, you're going to find out that your sound is going to be much more even. Once you get a, a clear buzz on a single note, working on getting a buzz across the different registers is the next step. And the way to do this is to simply play scales and arpeggios, once again, without articulation. So you're just going to basically be moving naturally between the notes. So as you work on the buzz, you want to make sure that you're setting the mouthpiece in the proper place. You have the proper plane with a good jaw position, a natural set, and that the buzz happens with pure purity and that you're able to move across registers. Starting, of course, practicing just single notes and then moving across the registers. If you're able to do that, then you have a great start into making a great sound.